to our 2020 Washington Mystics Media Day. Uh, we are going to try very hard to have a smooth schedule, but it's media day, so therefore it will not be smooth. So everybody, appreciate your patience. Um, we are going to start with Ariel Atkins. Uh, as always, uh, your, uh, you can raise your hands at the bottom of uh, the screen and we will rotate uh, first come, first serve. So Ariel Atkins is up. And you have to raise your hand if you have a question for Ariel. Oh, Kareem, hold on for one second. Kareem Copeland, go right ahead. Hey, what's up, Ariel? Okay. We were talking last time about um, kind of things that you want to improve on this season, and you were talking about being more vocal. But I was curious about, you know, physically on the court, what's kind of the next step that you want to kind of add to your game? Uh, absolutely attacking the rim. I think everybody knows that I can shoot the ball, especially on the kickout. Uh, being able to add that next level of scoring to my game at high pressure. Cool. Thank you. Christy Winter Scott. Hey, with just under a week to go before game one, how have things ramped up? I know Coach said he wanted to um, increase things in phases, and the last phase probably won't be achieved until um, you play a couple of games. But how have you seen the progress in just a short amount of time? Uh, well, right off the bat, our lungs. Um, <laughs> We can run as we're getting up and down the court um, and able to kind of catch that second win quicker. Um, that's one thing that I really noticed even with today in practice, kind of going up and down a little bit. Uh, the wind is the biggest thing to me as far as fundamentals of basketball and everything. I feel like that comes with more timing and more playing, just playing the game and getting back into rhythm. Uh, but definitely our lungs. <laughs> Jen Hatfield. Hi, Ariel. I'm curious what it's like uh, playing with Leilani, and I know you guys played a little bit with Shay last year, but playing with the two of them and, and how that kind of gives you a different look maybe than with Tosh last year. Yeah, um, Lay's a sniper. So, of course, it's fun for me um, because I have to respect – anytime you have a point guard that's scoring at different levels, they have to respect that. Um, they have to respect her shot. So – with her ability to also get to the rim and able to make those passes um, as she's driving. It's fun to have her on our team now. <laughs> um, and then playing with Shay. Uh, Shay was kind of with our team last year, so she's always been around. Um, it's not really different for us because she's been around. Um, she's a very fast point guard, knows how to get to the rack, can also shoot the ball. Um, and one thing I really love about having them is that they're both uh, vets in a sense that they've been playing the game for a while. Um, they understand kind of what's going on. And they're very helpful in helping me get vocal um, and helping me see different things on the floor. Neil Delal. Hey, Ariel. Hope you're doing well. Um, obviously, you're a key returning piece from last year. And with some people not returning, your usage could go up significantly. How do you think that's going to be able to show people more aspects of your game? Uh, well, for one, it's going to force me to be better. I mean, that's kind of my thought process behind all of this, uh, being one of the, I think, the only, yeah, only returning starter. Um, it's definitely going to force me to grow as a player, as a leader. Um, and I'm excited about it. I'm excited about the challenge because that means my game will grow. I'll be able to get better um, and become a better player in person out of all of this. Lindsey Gibbs. Yeah, hey, Ariel. Um, what's it going to mean for you opening weekend to have Breonna Taylor's name on the back of your jersey? What do you hope people um, who are watching take from that? Uh, it means a lot. For one, for me, it means that we're being heard as players um, from our league and from our sponsors. Um, and shout out to Angel McCautry for getting that bug in their ear about that. Um, I think it was something that is not really heard of. Um, and I'm very thankful to be a part of a league that allows their player voices to be at the forefront of everything that we do. Um, and it means a lot, not only to the players, but to the black community as a whole. Um, yes, we do understand it is one name, but it is a name that has made huge wave throughout the country, throughout the world. 
Um, we want our community to understand that we're with them, that we're here, and also Rihanna Taylor's family to know that we're continuing to fight. We're not going to let her name or her legacy die down by any means. Back to Jen Hatfield. Beyond just getting back to playing basketball and being on the court, what is the best part of being in the bubble been so far? Um, I guess just seeing everyone, kind of seeing how everybody is doing. Uh, we've been away for a while. Um, the WNBA is a pretty, I guess, close-knit league because there's 144 spots, 144 players. I know a lot of people have said that. Um, but just seeing everybody's faces in a different light. We haven't started playing yet, so I don't know if that's going to change much. Um, but just kind of seeing people chill out and just the camaraderie, I guess. We haven't really got to hang out with each other. <laughs> but um, it's also fun for us because we kind of have somewhat of a new team. So being able to just, I guess, get to know everybody in a different way. Please remember, if you need to ask a question, uh, raise your hand. Uh, it's located at the bottom of your screen. If you have any questions for Ariel Atkins. Oh, we have one, one more. Uh, Kareem. Hey, Ariel, I wanted to ask about something Mike said the other day. He was talking about the offense and just said, you know, as it's going to be different this year and said you guys might just be firing away. So I kind of just was curious of what's that looked like in these earlier practices? Are you, are you guys just getting shots up like crazy? Uh, I guess so. I was good to know his take on that. I guess that's what it looks like when he's watching. Um, <laughs> we're definitely all just trying to find rhythm. I guess that's what it looks like. Everybody's just trying to find a rhythm within the game. Uh, when you're away from the game for a while, be it the circumstance that we've been in with the world or injury or anything like that, um, you just try to eat your rhythm back. So I guess that's what it looks like to him. We're just firing away. Uh, and if it works, hey, it works. <laughs> Any other questions for Ariel Atkins? All right, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Ariel. Yep. Oh. See you. oh. No, no more. No, you're good to go. I thought I, someone was waving, but no. <laughs> See you, Kit. Bye. Oh, yo. Okay. Please raise your hand for um, Emma. Hello. Christy, go right ahead. Emma, I know that um, Coach has been uh, ramping up things, and I know you guys went up and down a little bit more today, uh, 5 on 5 uh, As a leader of the team, how have you seen things come along in the last couple of days? Uh, I feel good. Um, you know, we're still uh, trying to know each other, like how we play, but it's way better than in the beginning. Um, so just have to try to find our rhythm a little bit and probably be a, a little more physical um, to, in terms of evolution over the past few days. I really have, I'm feeling good about that. Lindsay Gibbs. Uh, Coach has said, like he's always said with you, that he's really wanting you to be more more aggressive this year, play off Emma the full time. Are you feeling that? As he said, so far he's sensing that we might get get the playoff Emma mentality the full time. Uh, how how are you feeling? And uh, I mean, you, I guess you have, looking around, you have to realize you're one of the veterans, one of the leaders, you know, the the point person on this team. Um. Well. For myself, I had to find a rhythm back too, because I, like everybody else, did not play for three months. Um, so I'm getting back to that, and I feel good today in practice. Um, you know, I'm happy to be um, able to play more five and five, because in the beginning we were really like just kind of shooting and running to a place. Um, but I need these kind of practices to find myself or play off Emma, whatever. Um, to, you know, be more aggressive. And the better I feel in practice, the more I can do it, I guess. Kareem. Hey, Emma, almost kind of speaking a little bit about aggressiveness. 
Uh, Mike was talking about the offense the other day and said it's going to be different than in the past, obviously, with some folks missing and said you guys might be just firing away, putting up more shots even than before. So I was just curious, has it, what's it looked like so far to you? What kind of shape has the offense kind of started to evolve in as you guys figure each other out? Um, I feel what's really working if it is when we are moving the ball and just keep cutting. Um, then again, that's the part we, we don't know each other that well. Like we don't know um, some people, what they like to do more, they pop, they roll, um, what kind of screens they like. So that's what we're trying to find out. Um, but I've seen really some good parts in the five and five that uh, you say, okay, this is a basketball that looks like last year. Um, it's never going to be like last year because it's different people, which is normal. Um, but I know if we play with a certain tempo, um, certain aggressiveness, that we're going to look pretty good. Jen? Hi, Emma. Um, I just wanted to ask you about what it's been like working with Asia Jones since she got promoted to an assistant coach. I know she was on staff last year, but um, what's it been like working with her and, and how has she kind of settled into that new role? Um, I love working with Asia. Um, last year, um, I was already working with her a lot after almost each practice, um, and it's the same now. Um, and she's really like passing on her little tricks um, that she used as a veteran, veteran player. Um, and, you know, she knows our life. She's been here. Um, I was actually supposed to play with her in my career, but she was injured when I was going to Moscow. So that's a big miss. We just found that out last year. Um, but she's such a good person and such a good basketball player that I was so happy to see her back again in practice. And um, she's really going to be a good coach. Gabe? Hey, Emma. Um, so Coach T said that if you, he was probably going to pick a focal point of the offense, it'd be you. Do you feel like that's happened so far in training camp? And are you looking forward to being – you know, more of the focal point than you were last year? Um, so, Maisha Hines Allen is just annoying me right now. So, I'm trying to focus. But Fair enough. It's hard. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I think that's a part of <laughs> the other, like, new players trying to get to know me. Uh, and I, them, like, they have to know what I like to do. So that's what we are talking through um, right now in practice. <laughs> um, <laughs> What's Maisha doing? I'm sorry, I won't show <laughs> Can you see her? <laughs> it's media. OK. So um, I don't feel like I have to be the only focal point or something. Um, I know I have to take my responsibility in this team this year, um, and I will try to do that. But I think that's what the defense is going to try to stop, too. So we're going to have to use everybody on the team and have different options. Christy? I was going to ask a tactical um, defensive question, but I think with Maisha being right there, um, I, I think I'm going to go ahead and ask you about the, um, the lizard that you found in the room. And uh, how did that situation come about? And, and how was that catching a lizard? Well, <laughs> Maisha was not doing anything. She was just sitting on the counter um, and just yelling and being on her phone. Um, a was a little better this time. Like she was helping out with the boxes, like making this way. But other than that, she was standing on the table. Um, so it's just so fun. They're pretty scared of bugs and lizards and animals. Um, so <laughs> I look forward to have more bugs and, or not, not bugs inside, but like to do more stuff with the animals and just scare them. <laughs> Lindsay? That's great. <laughs> You're like the big sister. <laughs> Um, I want to ask a little bit more on a, on a serious note, obviously, you know, coming from Belgium and being, you know, white player in the league with our minorities. I know you've 
I'm sure you've learned a lot about racism and the race relations in America. I remember you were there in the locker room when they did the media blackout um, back in 2016. Um, and now, so I just kind of want to ask what you've learned through um, you know, these conversations with your teammates during this and what does it mean to you to have Breonna Taylor's name on the back of your jersey? Um, I am so glad that I play in a team that really talks about everything. So as soon as um, the whole Black Lives Matter um, movement started, that we had calls, we had meetings in the locker room um, this year as well, that so that I can learn, like, what do I have to do? Um, in Belgium, it happens too, but um, it's only because of the whole thing happening in America that people start to speak more about it in Belgium. So I'm like, oh, it's really that bad in Belgium too, because I would think, I've never seen it happening, because um, I live in a part where it's only white people, I think, and um, like foreign people, they live in the bigger cities where I am not living. Um, so I'm really like paying more attention to everything now, like obviously at home, we talk about it too. So I'm seeing like opinions of my parents, my family, my friends, and, like of some of my friends, I was thinking, no. And before the whole thing, that before we uh, spoke about it with the missus, I would never like talk to them about it um, and say like, no, that's not how you should think about it. Let's. Um, so now I am like really talking to them and like explaining what is happening, what you should do, what you should not do. Um, so I'm learning and I'm like trying to bring it onto my people in Belgium, um, how to act and how to make the whole situation better. Wilson Tarpe. How you doing, Emma? Good. Um, I know you got you already brought up Maisha, but I want to talk about her on the court. We've seen her in spurts last year and even those little spurts, um, there's a lot of things she can do on the court. And uh, being with this a different group this year, uh, coach mentioned about some players having a big opportunity out of them. How do you how do you see her fitting in on both ends of the floor as someone who might spend time in different lineups next to you in the post or with two other bigs because she's a versatile piece? Um, well, already last year, I have to see that Maisha is really like, capable of a lot of stuff on a lot of positions. Um, and we use it, but we just had the luxury actually, actually that we had other players too. Um, I think last year we had um, so five starters and then the bench who would be a starter in any other team. So this year we finally gonna see like, okay, Maisha, what's she gonna be? She's so strong already physically and so fast. Um, so I look forward to see her like growing in the different positions like next to four and five positions. And we've been testing that out already um, and it's looking good so, so far. Um, so, I really like to play with Maisha on the court because, well, we already had a thing going on last year, um, so we can keep building on that. Um, we already know what we like. And I just look forward to, like, using more in the games this year. Jen? Your first game is against Indiana, which means it's against Julie Alamon. Are you looking forward to that matchup? And what should the rest of the league know about her? I'm so happy that she's here and that she finally is in the league where she deserves to be because she's really good. Um, over the past few years, she's really had a, she really has made a big evolution. Um, she's become one of our leaders in the national team as well. So um, I know that she is with the perfect coach and coach, coach stands. Um, and well, she's so fast. She's a good leader on the court in defense. Um, so I'm really hoping that she will learn a lot here so we can bring that back to Belgium too <laughs> as a selfish person. Um, but I think you'll fall in love with her game. Um, we're going to try to win, um, but I hope that she will do well because um, I know she can. I just hope that it's her first year and she will not be too intimidated. Um, she has a beautiful, beautiful game. So. Um, I really hope you can appreciate what she, whatever she's going to bring on the court. Uh, Kareem, hold on for a second. Kareem, go right ahead. I was just curious, what have you seen from Elena Coates so far? She kind of tries to, you know, um, revamp her career, get things back on the right track. What have you seen from her so far in this earlier portion? 
she has good hands. Like she catches the hard passes, and I mean that's the size we need inside too, because um, we're really undersized right now. Um, so it's good to have her here. Um, I think she can learn a lot from our team and from Coach T. But we're gonna see that throughout the season and play more games. Um, but it's looking good. Yeah, I like it. Karina Parks. Hey Emma, you mentioned how there's a lot of new members of the team. Has that at all impacted the energy or conversation around defending your title from last year? Um, well, we d we're not really talking about last season because it's a new team this year. Um, normally, like the last five-ish years, we were uh, like building from last year, but this year it's not like that. Um, it's still the same style that we want to play, but we have to bring the new people to that style. Like we want to say what we want on the court. Um, so I don't see this season as, you know, we got to defend our title or something. Uh, we're here as a new, pretty new team. Um, so we just, we will see what, whatever happens. All right, thank you, Emma. We have Lilani waiting, uh, so. Thank you. Okay, we have Leilani. Hold on for one second. Uh, Christy, go right ahead. Hey, Leilani. Uh, with a, a typical training camp, you know, you go through uh, several weeks and one part of the game is probably more developed than another. And I know it's been truncated a bit, but have you seen more uh, of a jump in terms of the offensive continuity with the team or on the defensive side? <laughs> well... I mean, I thought it was okay, and then we scrimmaged a little bit against Atlanta today, and we just weren't as good as what we should have been. Um, so I guess probably defensively, we're probably better than offensively right now. Kareem? Hey, Lalani, I just wanted to ask about that scrimmage. You know, you guys have kind of been shorthanded, and I know done a lot of three-on-three, four-on-four drills, but now that you guys kind of got a chance to get out and run full court, how did that feel, you know, mixing in with um, your new teammates and just kind of getting used to people now in kind of a full court setting against another team? Yeah. Um, I mean, it felt good, obviously, to go against someone else other than, you know, your teammates. Um, and I think it uh, sort of gave us a wake-up call that we need to be a lot more physical because um, Atlanta was – a lot more, um, you know, a lot tougher than we were both offensively and defensively. So I don't know if we just weren't quite ready, um, but, you know, it, it's still preseason and it's good. It was, it was a good scrimmage for us. And I think we're going to have another one in a couple of days. So, um, you know, we still have time to correct things before the game start, which is, which is a plus. Tyler. Hey, Leilani. Uh, you, I know you aren't new to the organization and you know some of the people involved in it, but you and Essence and Elena have talked about how you guys have been welcomed by the team and you have been able to bond with them and really they welcomed you to make it mo more cohesive. Is this something that maybe with the bubble keeping you guys just so close together and interacting on a regular basis, is that something that's beneficial to you all? Oh, definitely. Um, I know, especially for um, the group that's staying in the hotel, I think there's about six of us. So we go eat all our meals together and usually um, at times hang out at night as well and play games or, you know, just do some bonding things. So um, I think it's definitely helped. And, um, you know, I think we have a really good um, relationship off the court. And I think on the court, obviously, it's still building and we still have to figure out each other's tendencies and all of that and how we're all going to fit together. Jen? Hey, Leilani. Um, Coach T said a couple days ago that Maisha Hines Allen was maybe going to play some point forward at times. Um, did you guys try that out today? And, and either way, you know, I'm, I'm kind of just curious for your evaluation as a point guard of her point forward skills. Well, yeah, so um, <laughs> she did today. And I think it caught us all off guard because she hasn't done it yet in practice. So um, yeah, she did a good job today. Obviously, you know, we'll run certain plays if, if she does do that. And 
um, gives us a different look. So, you know, she actually has some pretty good ball handling skills and, and she's composed. Um, so yeah, I think it'll be interesting. And, and for, for her first time today, I think she did a good job. Uh, hold on for one second, Chantel. I'm going to try to... Great. Go ahead. Yeah. Leilani, thanks so much for talking with us today. Um, kind of a larger picture question. Over the last several years, we've seen guards in the league shoot more and more three-pointers. Um, as someone who's shot a lot of those yourself, I was just curious if you have a hypothesis why that is. Um, why? I don't, I don't know. I don't know why. I think it's just how the game's evolved. Um, you know, obviously it's worth more more points. And then, um, you know, and we have so many bigs in the league, like dominant five players. Um, and so people are starting to sag in on them. And, and obviously in order to get the defense to get away from the basket, you've got to have shooters outside. So I think, you know, it's a combination of different things. And it's obviously exciting. The fans like it, you know, it's like Steph Curry. Everyone likes his deep threes and all of that. So I think it's carried over to the women's game as well. And I think um, the fans enjoy it. If you have a question for Leilani, please raise your hand. Um, checking in. All right. Well, thank you, Leilani. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right. Uh, Christy for Maisha. Hey, Maisha. Uh, Coach Chibo said the other day that you were a lot like uh, Draymond Green in terms of being able to be an initiator in the offense and get rebounds and push it up the floor. And then um, Leilani just shared with us that you did that a little bit in the scrimmage today. Um, how is that in terms of being something different that you're going to be able to do this season for the Mystics? Uh, well, ever since I like came to the Mystics, Coach T like always compared me to Draymond Green. And it's just like who I was surrounded with playing with. It was just, like I couldn't get minutes really. So it's just like continue to grow, continue to learn. And then this year I have the opportunity to actually, you know, do everything that I've been practicing. And um, yeah, like Leilani said, we, <laughs> we did it today. And I mean, you know, it, it was the first time, you know, I did it like actually like played the point guard position. Um, but it's something I look forward to um, during the season. Kareem. Anyway, so you just kind of mentioned it, you know, this year um, a lot more opportunity for you. Just how are you kind of approaching that, you know, um, just from your mindset, number one, and just physically, what are you out there trying to show so you can take care of, take advantage of that opportunity to get more minutes this year? Yeah. Uh, well, last year I always, in my mindset was stay ready. Like, just stay ready. You never know what's going to happen. Um, like we had a lot of injuries uh, last year. So it's just like, you know, stay ready. So whenever your number's called, your name's called, I'll be out there. I know what I'm doing. Um, but like this year, it's a different team, um, different setting. So I'm just going into practice with an open mind, like whatever the coaches need me to do, that's what I'm going to do for the team also for us to succeed. So, yeah. Lindsay. Obviously, this first weekend is going to be uh, all the players are going to have Brianna Taylor's name on the back of their jersey. I want to ask, what does that mean to you, and what do you hope people will take from that? Oh, it means a lot to me. Uh, for one, just the fact that I went to Louisville, I it kind of like sticks a little more into me because Louisville isn't Louisville's Louisville. Like, yeah. forget the uh, the whole state. It's just Louisville is Louisville. So. Um, so that's kind of like more touching to me, kind of bring, takes home for me, but it's just like another black individual dying. Um, and it's, it's just sickening in my side. Like there's no other words for it, in my opinion. Um, and, you know, just to have her name on the back of my Jersey, I'm going to have it throughout the whole season. Um, it's just going to mean a lot. It's not, I'm not just playing for myself before I was playing for my, uh, not just myself, but my family. Now I'm playing for something more or something bigger. Uh, so her name will stay on my Jersey the whole season. Jen. Hey, Maisha. You and I have talked a little bit before about how close you are with Tosh and, and how you, uh, you know, really look up to her. 
how has it been not having her here? And, and are you trying to, you know, fill some of that leadership or activism role that she would normally bring? Um, I mean, it's hard to fill Tasha's shoes, whether it's on the court, off the court. Um, so I'm just trying to just do whatever I can do to help the team, whether that be on defense, just continue to talk on defense. Um, like, I'm thinking now back to our scrimmage where like my girl wasn't really setting a lot of screens and I was kind of like the quarterback seeing where everything's going um, and just talking like that. So I think, you know, it's hard to be what Tosh is. Um, so just being myself and doing what I'm, I know I'm capable of doing on the court and off the court as well. Um, that's really what I'm focused on this year. Karita Parks. Hi, Maisha. I have more of a family question for you. I had a chance to talk to your brother, Josh, back in December. And when I mentioned your name, he was very supportive and proud of what you've been able to accomplish. Can you describe your relationship with Josh and what influence he's had on you and your career? Oh, yeah, it's my little brother. <laughs> um, so it's just like that type of like relationship. Like he's so big now, but like, it's still like my little brother. And um, I remember our, one of our conversations we had, which like we never had this deep of a conversation was actually about being a professional um, and like what it took. And he was just asking me like different questions of like, you know, um, when you're a professional, do you, do you still do this? And I know like we're playing two different sports, but you know, being a professional, you're, you're a role model. And you know, that's something that he prides himself on. Um, he's a father now to two kids. So he prides himself on being that leader in his family um, and off the court and on, and on the field too. So, I mean, um, yeah, that's like my little brother. <laughs> that's really it. Um, I love him to death. I love him to death. Wilson. Hey, Maisha, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing all right. Um, you mentioned a little earlier just your mentality last year about having to stay ready. Uh, coaches mentioned opportunity for several for you and a couple of a uh, couple of your teammates. What does that opportunity mean now? All the time you've had behind the scenes, uh, putting the work in practice, taking information in to how you can put it to your game to now you get a chance to actually show it. Um, what what does that finally mean to you? Uh, it means a lot, but again, I'm not a player that you know, focuses on myself. I'm more of a team player. So like my first year, like I was like learning a lot. My second year, I was focused, dialed in on like Emma and Toya and, and seeing how like, how they move without the ball, like how they get their shots open. Um, so like this year, like you said, like I'll have a um, opportunity to play more. Uh, so I'm really just focused on seeing how you know, my game can translate to make this team successful. And I think I, I can do it. Um, you know, I just got to stay out of my head sometimes, but that's just a part of the game. Jen? Going back to that point forward role that you might be playing at times, how do you think that that opens up opportunities for you guys on offense, whether that's creating opportunities for you or, or for your teammates? Um, it creates early offense. If I can take the ball off the rim and just push it, um, Coach Emma now is doing what I was doing to her. Um, uh, sorry. <laughs> oh, taking the ball off the rim and just going um, can create early offense, and that's kind of what Coach T wants us to push the pace. And if I'm capable of doing that, I, re I think I rebound the ball pretty well uh, for my size. So if I'm able to do that, we can get early offense, push the ball, and that's plays into what, you know, our strengths are. Any more questions for Maisha? Thanks. Tyler, you didn't have a question? There's one more. Last question. Okay. Christy? Uh, just really quickly. Uh, <laughs> one more. Um, the um, – the living conditions are, are, they look beautiful. You guys are having a lot of fun down there, but there was a lizard that got into the, <laughs> into the area and Emma kind of. My first one. Took care of it. <laughs> what happened today? What was that about? So I'm going to take the first day we had a lizard in and we didn't know where the lizard went. But we seen him, he was inside, or she was inside, I don't know. 
she was, the lizard was inside. So a couple days ago, I was minding my business in the kitchen and I went to go throw something away and the lizard just, just ran out from the, from the, um, from the garbage. And I immediately called Emma and A because that's what they, they <laughs> like that type of stuff. <laughs> Emma likes catching lizards. So I stayed in the kitchen on the counter sitting while they caught the lizard. And then Emma decided to like chase me around. Like what type of teammate is that? What type of friend is that? I don't like lizards. I don't like animals besides my dog. And yeah, it was, it was a lot going on that day. It was a lot, but moral of the story, if y'all see another video of a lizard, just know I'll be running away again. I'll never catch a lizard. Um, that's Emma's job. That's, well, A didn't really catch it. She helped her, but like, she was kind of scared too. I hope she tells y'all that. But yeah, that was a lizard story. On that note, thank you so much. No problem. See you guys later. Bye. If anyone has any questions for Kiara, please raise your hand. Lindsay? Uh, yeah, hi Kiara. I just, I guess, wanted to ask, how are you feeling out there? And I know you've gotten about a week of practice under your belt, I'm sure after, you know, learning everything, learning the systems and everything last year, but what has the transition been like to actually being, you know, on the court, being able to do the drills, being able to do the scrimmage. What's that transition been like for you? Um, it's a big learning experience. Um, I think just learning basic principles. I feel like everything we learned in college, I need to erase and just focus <laughs> on what I'm learning right now. Um, and I think that's just the biggest adjustment. It's just finding those little things to fine tune. And of course, getting back on the court. <laughs> But you're feeling okay? You're feeling good? Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. feeling a lot better. Good. Christy? Who has helped you the most in terms of, you know, relearning everything, as you just said? Like, if it's a, a coach or a player, who has been that voice for you so far? Honestly, I feel like everyone is just chiming in. Um, if, if I need help, communicating better with the post and what I'm supposed to do on screens or whatever. They're doing the post are doing a great job. And then of course the guards are helping me by showing me what to do, but also just keeping that reinforcement. And of course the coaches, um, I know Coach Cheese helped me a ton with just a little adjustments and the switches from college to pros and things in that aspect. Wilson? How you doing, Kiara? Uh, I heard you talking about, um, you know, just some of the differences and some of the adjustments. What's been uh, more difficult, the adjustments on defense or offense for you? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I would say more defensive, um, just like basic principles we learned in college. So like on a cross screen, we would bump low where it's here or no on a cross screen we would bump high where it's here they want us to go the opposite so just little things like that on a defensive end and not allowing guards to go middle just those types of things christy did you have another question no then to jen Hey, Kiara. Um, I'm curious how you look at your game and, and how it's um, different or, or gives the team a different look than some of the other players on the wing, like an Ariel Powers or an Ariel Atkins. Um, of course, I would say that I do a lot of rebounding, so I like crashing boards. Um, on, the, on the defensive end, I can definitely guard a variety of players. Um, 
Yeah, I would say me, <clears throat> excuse me, um, mine and AP's games are a lot similar. Of course, we have certain things that we like to do or whatever, but I think that if I would compare my game to someone on the team, it would be AP's. And if I if I can follow up real quick, did watching her kind of get a lot of minutes down the stretch last year with Christy Tolliver out, did that give you ideas or, or confidence that you could do the same when you were back? Um, oh yeah, I just definitely think <clears throat> when I when I do get minutes, just come out and produce and help the team in any kind of way that I can. Um, we definitely don't have our full team here, so I know that. A lot of minutes are, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of minutes are up in the air and I'm just ready to take advantage of my opportunity. Lindsay? Yeah, I, I just want to ask, uh, you're living with AP, right? AP, <laughs> how is that going? And does she, is her energy levels from morning to night um, as high as everyone has said they are? I was living with AP, but then something happened. <clears throat> Sorry, I, my throat was dry. Um, oh. I was living with her, but then we moved to the hotel. But yes, oh, okay. she's always full of energy. She was always <laughs> in my room. <laughs> when we were Brandon? Yeah, I Brandon? Good afternoon. Um, really uh, wanted to speak on two things. Of course, um, First, how was the scrimmage for you today and how do you evaluate your performance? And then secondly, going into the season, of course, you've had the opportunity to be around and see a lot of the players, um, the veterans, um, last year while on the roster. But is there any particular matchup that you're like kind of like looking forward to this season of uh, someone maybe guarding you or someone that you'll have the opportunity to guard? Um, I guess you can walk me through those two things. Um. Matchup wise, you know, I'm not, I'm not really sure. You know, I, whoever they tell me to guard, I'm just, that's what I'm going to do. Not necessarily looking forward to playing, I guess, one certain person. Um, and what was your other question? How, how do you rate your performance in the scrimmage earlier today? And how did that feel? It, I think um, I think I did well. I knocked down my open shots. I think I can be a little bit more aggressive on the defense and offensive end, but I think that's part of me adjusting to going full speed, whereas in practice is more learning and a little bit slower. And today we're going against people that don't know our plays and sets. So just adjusting and taking advantage of that. Thank you. Wilson. Uh, thank you. I had another quick question for you. Um, you mentioned you like to crash the glass. At both stops in college, you did a great job at that as well, uh, hitting the glass and also running the floor. With a group like this, I know you guys are missing some of uh, your more highly touted players, but you guys have a lot of size and length on the wings. How important is it, and uh, just as a wing, that so many of you are comfortable crashing the glass? And do you feel like you guys will be able to kind of make up for, obviously, you're missing a couple 6'4", six, 6'5", six, players, but – do you think you guys on the wing can kind of try to help make up for some of that on the glass? Of course. Yeah, I think that our wings here definitely – we have a great – we have great size advantage um, at the wing position. And we all we all love to get out, rebound, and run. So I think um, once we get comfortable playing with one another, I think it will flow really well and we'll be able to get a lot of transition points. Any last questions for Kira? Nope. Okay, that's it for today, Kira. Thank you. Thanks. If anyone has questions for Ariel, please raise your hand. I think she's on mute. There we go. I'm not on mute anymore. Christy? Hey, AP. Um, you guys had a scrimmage today, and I know you've had about a week of practice under your belt. What did you take from that scrimmage, and what are maybe the three things that you want to see improvement on before the opener on Saturday? Yeah, um, I think we could have done a, re a really better job at spacing the floor. 
that's one. Um, our picks could have been better. And our pace right now, uh, we're still trying to learn each other, like I said before, but you could really tell in scrimmage today, we're a little bit off. But once our spacing and screens get a little bit better, where we're playing off of each other, um, I think we'll be all right. Wilson? How you doing, Ariel? Um, since, uh, since you came over and joined the Mystics, we've seen your role kind of evolve mm -hmm. on the past two seasons. What's the next step for you, considering you guys are missing some pieces, but uh, you, like several others, can do so many different things on the floor. So what's your next, uh, the next evolution for you in this system? Um, I think it would just be playing off of last year. I think I did a good job when KT is hurt. And I think this is a big year for me, kind of showing what I, I have to offer. Um, I was able to do that when KT went down. And I continue, I'm going to continue to do that. Whatever the team needs from me, I will, I will get done. Whether it's rebounding, defense, defensively, and you already know I love to score the ball, so I'm going to do that. But um, whatever my team needs. Lindsay? Hey, um, Kiara was just in here and she said that of everyone in the team, she feels like her game is um, probably most similar to yours. So I wanted to ask, what have you seen from her game and from her development as she's, she's kind of in an interesting position just watching all last year and now finally being able to get out there on the court? I'm excited for her to play. I know how it is being hurt. Um, I've went through that and the comeback from that mentally and physically, but seeing her out there, she looks really good. She looks like she's paying attention. Not only that, she looks strong and, and ready to play. Um, she's not forcing anything. And I know sometimes after coming off an injury, it's like, you want to get out there so bad. You're just doing, trying to do everything. And she's, she's not doing that. She's letting things come to her. She's uh, settling in and she was knocking some threes down today too. So um, I do think her game is similar to mine where she can box a few girls out that might be bigger than her and get the rebound and score when needed to. So I think she'll um, surprise a lot of people this year. Cream. Mike has talked, whoops, and now I'm unmuted. Sorry about that. Start, jump the gun. Uh, Mike has kind of talked about, you know, the offense is going to look different this year uh, because it's a different roster. Um, now that you guys have kind of scrimmaged a little bit and had a little bit of a week, have you gotten a feel of what that will look like eventually or, or what it will look like um, when you guys are at your best and once everybody kind of, you know, gets a feel for each other? Um, I can't really talk after one scrimmage, you know, especially because we were a little bit you know, I mentioned before, a little all over the place and our spacing was really bad. Um, I think what he means by that is, you know, we had, we also had Latoya, we had Della, we had Tasha at the PG. So for us, I think it's uh, having our PGs bring the ball up, but also running plays kind of like he did last year where we could all touch the ball or somebody denies a point guard. Maybe the shooting guard can bring it up. But um I think our offense is kind of going to be like uh, the, the Warriors again. You know, they don't have that huge post. They have everybody that can swing the ball until somebody gets an open shot off of a pick or pick and roll. So I just feel like similar to last year, with the exception of, you know, Della and Toya's points coming inside, we're going to have to swing the ball around and make the defense work. Thank you. You're welcome. Jen? Hey, Ariel, just wanted to ask you about your vlogs on, on YouTube. Um, why did you start making that those, and are those um, a limited time coronavirus thing, or are those going to be a, a fixture for a while? It's going to be there for a while. Um, I actually started getting into YouTube a little bit when I started my YouTube gaming channel. And then I was like, I should do more personal stuff than just my uh, my gamer stuff. Because I know people, some people get into my game and stuff, some people don't. <laughs> so uh, everybody kind of likes to be like, you know, nosy, I would say, in our business. Like, what is, what's going on in the Wubble? And of course, you guys aren't here, so we want you guys to know what's going on. But after the Wubble, I'm still going to be vlogging, for sure. Is there anyone you're, you're um, 
trying to get on that hasn't made an appearance in the Wubble blogs yet? Mm, no. Is, is it someone you want to know about? Someone I should put on the blog? Oh, am I on the spot now? Whoa. <laughs> um, I feel like we got to get Coach T on one of these. We, okay. I, I saw that you got Asia, but... Um, okay. okay. You might, I'll well. hit with some questions, too. Don't worry, I got you guys. <laughs> No worries. <laughs> and Lindsay. Yeah, hey, um, I wanted to ask, what does it mean to you to have Brianna Taylor's name on the back of your jersey? And what do you hope um, people um, take from that? It's a lot. I'm, I'm extremely happy that the WNBA has took this time to put the name Brianna Taylor on the back of the jersey. You know, we all, we try to do as much as we can with our platform and our voices. But the fact that we have the WNBA backing us just puts us in the forefront when it comes to getting social social justice. So um, I'm really happy about it. Um, unfortunately, you know, no one's been arrested yet, but I feel like with our voices continuing, continuing this, this, this Black Lives Matter movement, um, things are going to change. So I'm happy that the WNBA backed us. You know, they talked about sponsors on, you know, our jerseys, and they had to go to them to see if the name could be even put on the jersey, which I just learned last, uh, last night. Um, so the fact that even our sponsors are backing us, it means a lot. Thank you. Brandon? Good afternoon, AP. Um, just uh, speaking with Alicia Gray previously, she mentioned that you are like a very fierce gamer. And, you know, you all have had some um, some pretty good battles. So what has that been like in the Wubble? Um, I know you mentioned previously like a t getting a tournament together. So who are some of your favorite, I guess, other um, WMEA athletes to um, play against in terms of uh, video gaming? Um, yeah, me and Gray have been going back to back. Anyone that follows our Twitch, I actually got her into Twitch. Anybody that follows our Twitch loves the battles we have. We talk junk. I talk junk to her brother, her boyfriend. Like, we just go off about it. It's fun. Um, but I, I think um, a lot of girls are now starting to really, really get in, into 2K, which is awesome. And then I also play Apex Legends, and Brittany Griner plays that. So uh, we set up a time to do it, and then, like, her internet was messing up, so me and her have to, like, figure out another time. But um, it's, it's been fun, and the tournament is coming along. Registrations will be in the next few weeks. So I'm a gamer, and I love it. <laughs> okay. Appreciate you. Cream. Hey, hey, I was curious, what have you seen from Elena Coates so far? You know what? Um, so I've, I've, I've learned – well, I knew Elena Coates back in the end of my college season when I played with the USA team. That's when I actually met her. So, you know, I've been watching her ever since. And now I just feel like she really, her hands are great. You know, I feel like before they were, they weren't as amazing as they are now. She's catching almost everything we throw down there, which is great. She had a few blocks actually in the scrimmage today. So um, her length is going to help us in our in our future for sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Christy? With that being said, um, in terms of the defense, how has Essence Carson um, impacted the rhythm and the continuity that you want to see, especially on the defensive side, on the perimeter? Um, she's doing a really good job. Everybody knows that Essence, you know, is a really, really, really good defender. And that's also something coach preaches um, on that defensive end. Okay, who's going to be our stopper? Who, now we have a, a lot of girls that can guard at the perimeter. So I don't think we'll have a problem with that too much. Um, and if, say, anybody, you know, needs a sub, we're right there to pick up the slack. So she's been doing really, really good defensively and re did really good in our scrimmage as well. And with that, just to tag that, just um, her experience, um, how did that yeah. help, obviously, with, without a lot of the pieces there with experience? It helps because, um, you know, at MSU, Coach Merchant said this, Izzo says this, 
player coach teams are better than coach coach teams. So like if you if you have girls that feed off each other, that learn from each other, that can communicate to each other, and then you have someone like Essence that comes along and can talk to us and we all listening, I mean the chemistry is gonna come along. We just need a little bit more time. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Any last questions for Ariel? Okay, that's it, Ariel. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Bye. Hi, Shay. Hey. If anyone has any questions for Shay, please raise your hand. Oh, gotta go. Jen. Hey, Shay. Um, just wanted to ask you, uh, so last year when you switched over uh, from playing to coaching, did you always envision getting back into playing and or were you retired? And, and how has it felt, um, you know, these last couple of days in training camp? Um, no, I never thought about retiring. Uh, I definitely want to continue to play. Um, and training camp has been going well. Um, you know, we're still learning each other, but I like what we have so far. Um, we have a good group. And I think once we, you know, get our chemistry down and just learn each other, uh, we could be something special. Lindsay? Yeah. Hey, Shay. Um, I just wanted to see um, what does it mean to you to have Brad Taylor's name on the back of your jersey? And uh, what do you hope people, when they're watching this weekend and seeing it on everyone's jersey, will get from that? Um, it means a lot. You know, I think uh, even more so that her, the people who murdered her are still, you know, living, living their life and haven't been arrested or even charged. So Hopefully, you know, just by having her name on our jersey, it brings awareness to everybody and they just Google if they don't know why we have her name and her story. And it could just bring more attention to the situation and hopefully uh, justice is served for her. Christy? Hey, Shay, with the, the scrimmage that you had today, um, what were the good things that you saw the team doing on the floor on both sides? Um, I think we were moving the ball really well. Uh, we're talking, and even though we might have, like, minor mistakes, uh, we're still talking to each other and communicating and just, like, encouraging each other. Um, and even on uh, offense, you know, we're moving the ball well. We're doing our cuts, hitting our shots. I just think, you know, we're overthinking a little bit, and everybody's just kind of, like, second-guessing. But once we just learn to just play and just read off of each other, um, we're looking really good. We're going to be really good. Thank you. Jen? Kind of piggybacking off of Christy's question, um, how similar or different do you think your and Leilani's games are and, and what do you guys bring, you know, either providing different looks or, or just what do you guys bring at point guard for the team? Um, you know, I think we, we're both quick. Uh, we can shoot the, uh, the ball really well. Um, Lay, you know, she's a veteran, so she's probably have she sees the game a little better than me. And I think for me, um, my strength may come from on defense, like intensity wise. But I think uh, we can really play off of each other, whether it's uh, driving a kick, finding our teammates, like we're both very unselfish and want to get our teammates open as much as possible and make their jobs easier. So I think, uh, yeah, I don't know if they answer the question, but <laughs> Tyler. Hey, Shay. Uh, both times that you've been put on the roster with this team have been under unique circumstances. How is this opportunity for you different from last year, and what are you trying to get out of this as opposed to what you maybe couldn't have gotten out of the, it last year? Well, unlike previous times, um, I'm not going into training camp, you know, trying to work for a spot. I'm kind of going into the team already on the roster and I, I know all the players. So that takes a big weight off my shoulders. I'm just able to relax and play. Um, and even just like, just being focused and mentally and just, you know, the coach has a lot of trust in me, Brian back for a reason. So I think now I can just really show what I can do. You know, I'm just not just a player who was like, oh, just put her on just because it's filling the space. Like he could have brought anybody back. You know, it's a bunch of rookies out there, other players who have been in the league who are on, on the roster now. So the fact that he brought me back, says a lot and I just want to just go out and just show like what I can do you know with a bigger role and a chance to just get to play. 
Thanks. Lindsay? Um, on that note, I wondered at what point did you start to hear that you might be asked back this year? Like at what point did that kind of enter your, uh, come on your radar? I know you stayed close with the team during the off season. Uh, and also, you know, last year coach was pretty open that, you know, he, he trusted in you, but that it was, you know, you, they had, you had a full roster more, more or less. So it was more, you know, um, in practices and things like that, where he was relying on you. Whereas now there's just 10 of you. So I was wondering how that changes your mindset as well, knowing um, you're probably gonna be seeing the court a lot more. Uh, well, your first question, um, I actually didn't hear anything. Uh, I was just working out one day and then I got a call from him and he's like, hey, you know, I know you're coming down for the ring ceremony. Ceremony. How, how do you feel about just staying for the whole summer? <laughs> I'm gonna bring him back for like a coaching spot. So I'm like, okay. He's like, no, yeah, I want you to like, be on the team. You know, you know, Tasha, whatever, is not playing. So we want to, you know, sign you. And I was like, wait, are you, are you joking? Like, I, I didn't believe I thought he was joking with me. Like, don't, don't play my emotions right now. <laughs> so I, I was super excited. And um, the second half of your question, um, I think just for me, I, my focus is different because now I'm preparing when I'm in practices and stuff to actually be in the game not so much like I, I knew before like I would practice but I'm probably not going to see the court so you know my mentality was just different but now it's like you know everything I do translate it's going to translate to the court so just be prepared because I'm definitely going to get in I'm going to get more minutes my role is going to be bigger than it's ever been on this team so yeah I, I just take every day like you know I go and I work hard and i um, just trying to gain the trust of my teammates so they can you know get a feel for how I play because even though I practiced with them last year it's different being on the court, you know, we're playing with somebody. So I'm just really just hope, you know, my game can just fit with the whole chemistry and, you know, something, something good can come out of this. Something good will come out of this. Well, we have one more follow up there. I know, like, it's been, I guess, now about, what, 14 months since you were cut from the team into training camp again. And I know we talked about that a lot last year, about that journey. Um, can you kind of sum up, like, how, what, you would, what you would now tell Shay from, like, 15 months ago when she feels like, again, lost her chance, and now here you are for the full sum summer, like? <laughs> I, I honestly don't know, because I, I feel like every time I come into training camp, it's like, all right, Shay, we got this. This time it's going to be different. We're going to make it <laughs> to come into this year actually on the team, like, it feels different. I'm not going to lie. It really feels different. Like every day I've been going and okay, like, what are we going to do? Just don't make a mistake. You got this. And it's like, wait, you're already on the team. Like, you know, just breathe, <laughs> just play the game. Like don't overthink it. So I think I would tell last year, Shay, like, just, just stay patient. Like your time is coming and just when it comes, be prepared for the opportunity and make the most out of it. Thanks. Jen. Are there things that you feel like you've improved in your game from being part of the coaching staff, or do you feel like it was just more helpful to, um, you know, go overseas in the off season and improve that way? I think I understand uh, his philosophies more like, you know, defense rotations and what he's looking for at the point guard position, just like watching film with Tosh last year and just what, you know, going over different players. Um, I know what he's looking for specifically, and in my game, I, I've been working on, like, you know, the mid-range uh, driving and kicking off, like, one-hand passes, like, just, like, little tune-up stuff that I did. And when I was overseas, I tried to, like, translate what I've learned from last summer into my game. And um, even though the season got cut short, I, I, I think it's, like, registered in my head. And, like, even now into this training camp, um, everything's pretty much carrying over. And it's just a matter of getting comfortable, getting repetition up, and just uh, believing, in, believing in yourself. Brandon? Earlier, Essence mentioned how the team has been really doing a lot of bonding together. Um, you all are doing everything from eating, playing cards, um, just really getting to know each other on an, a level outside of basketball. How do you feel that energy would translate to the your on-court performance this season? Um, I think it's going to be excellent. Uh, like we, we do a lot of team bonding. And for me, I think uh, the best way to gain chemistry on the court is to have it off the court. Like, you know, you, you build friendships and bonds and you learn what people love to do. So I think once we just settle down and just like, you know, just, okay, take the time to even ask, okay, what do you like? Okay, what do you like? Okay, I'll get you this position. 
we're we're going to be we're going to be dominant. Um, we're really going to be a force to reckon with. I know people have probably underestimated us because of like the players who have sat out, and we're almost kind of a completely new team. Like those who were here last year, their roles are you know have to be higher and higher than they were last year. So I think I think um, we can bring that chemistry off the court onto the court. It's the league. The league better watch out for us. We're coming. Thanks. Any last questions for Shay? No. Okay. Thank you, Shay. Thank you. Any questions for Tiana? No, that's it. Sorry. <laughs> Christy? Hey, TT. What, what has been um, your take on the practices leading up to the scrimmage today and then um, evaluate what you feel um, after that scrimmage? Um, I think um, the energy and the um, aurora of our practices have been good. Um, we've been doing a lot of learning and just trying to get a feel for one another um, as far as our team and the way we're looking this year. Um, I think uh, for the scrimmage, um, we got a, a good test um, this morning with Atlanta. Um, we were able to see where we we were at as a team. I think um, we have some good takeaways and we're able to learn from it. And still, as we start to learn uh, one another again and start to learn our new team, it's going to give us some good feedback. What's one good takeaway um, from the scrimmage today? Um, I think it's the, the biggest thing is we all want to compete. Um, that's just, that's been the common thing is just being being able to compete and just having each other's back. Thank you, mm -hmm. Adam. Hi, thanks. Hi, Tiana. Uh, good to see you. I'm sorry if you've been asked this earlier in camp, but I just wanted to ask. Um, between Tina not being there, um, we know Elena won't be there at the start. It sounds like Mike Tebow has a, a bigger role for you in mind. How are you approaching getting ready for this season with possibly expanded minutes, a bigger role, and, and more responsibility on your shoulders? Um, I think the biggest thing for me um, personally, um, I'm just going to play my game. What I played um, in recent years, um, each day, I mean, each year I want to come back better than I was the year before. I understand that the opportunity, um, more opportunities here for me um, this year, but I'm not going to try to do anything out of the ordinary. Um, of course, I'm gonna try new things, but just to stick to what I do best and just try to be the best version of myself every night for the team. Thanks, good luck. Thank you. Kareem. Hey, hey. Uh, Mike has kind of talked a little bit about how the offense is gonna be different, obviously, because you guys have a different team. Um, mm -hmm. Speaking to everybody earlier today, sounds like a little bit more up-tempo, pushing the ball up. Can you just give me a little bit of feel of what you think you guys will look like on the offensive end this year? Um, well, we said, you, you already said it. Um, it's going to be a lot of um, fast pace, but also just being efficient um, offensively and just looking for the, the best shot and not really having to force anything and just having confidence in one another on the offensive end. Thank you. Lindsay? Hi, I wanted to ask, um, obviously, John Lewis passed away, and I know you were part of the team that got to go to his office and visit him, and I wonder, what do you remember from that, and what do you remember uh, learning from that trip to visit him? Um, so, we, so, yes, I was on the team when we had the opportunity to go visit him, and I just remember that visit, like, I will never forget it. It was, um, it was just so great being able to be in the same room of such a noble man, um, and just for him to share his experience, like that will always stick with me. Um, you know, prayers go out to his family. Um, sorry to hear about his passing and his battles, but to have the experience to be in the same room as someone who fought for our country from way back when to even up until his death, um, it was an amazing experience. Jen? Hey, Tiana. Um, I know that Asia Jones was on staff last year, so you've worked with her, but, but now that she's been promoted um, to, to an assistant coach, can you talk about what it's like working with her and, and how she's been helpful to your team so far this training camp? 
I mean, Asia, a legend. <laughs> um, it's been great working with her. I've been I've I've been able to work with her um, prior to getting here um, to the bubble. Um, she just has so much knowledge for the game. So anytime I have time to talk to her or to work on my game, like she's right there with me. Um, and just you know, it's great to have someone you know a champion Olympian just to learn you know, some little cheat, some cheat codes to the game. Um, and she, you know, she has endless moves. So it's been helping me. Um, we were talking about it earlier. Um, just her influence has been great, you know, for the bigs, you know, we're starting to see carryover from the time that we have one-on-one -on -one with her into playing. So it's, it's, she's, she's a great resource. Wilson? How you doing, Tiana? Hey. Uh, quick question. I know we've talked so many times over the past couple of years just about the strength of the bench as yeah. the team continued to grow. Uh, what does it mean? I know you mentioned what it would mean for you personally, but for others, for the Maishas, uh, Powers, uh, some of uh, even someone like Elena Coates, um, yeah. what does it mean that that depth now, uh, you know, those minutes are different now. They finally get a chance to kind of fit in a little bit differently because some of the players that you guys are missing this year? Well, like you said, things are different. Um, things are different. Um, roles are, diff are, are a little different, um, but the mindset doesn't change. Um, you know, we always want to, you know, reiterate, you know, we need that spark off the bench, whether, you know, you're the first person or the last person. So that's just been the biggest thing for me, you know, telling my team, you know, when, we're, when we get in practice, you know, no matter if you're starting, no matter if you're the second stream, like we gotta have that energy and just be ready when our name is called. Cream. Speaking of Elena Coates, just what's caught your um, eye about her game so far? Um, she's, I mean, I feel like she's a, she's a traditional five. Um, she's a big body. Um, she, she, she gonna, she gonna get in there and block some shots. Um, <laughs> um, she's a very physical post. Um, and just her, she's willing and eager to learn. Um, I know she pulls me aside, you know, to get a better understanding of our offense and what thing, little things she can do to, um, put herself in a better position to be successful. So she's, she's been really great for us. Thank you. Jen. On a little bit of a lighter note, um, I know that AP has been doing her vlogs, you know, on the way to Florida and since arriving at IMG. Um, have Have you guys enjoyed being a part of those? Or um... uh, yeah, it's cool. She she's she's sometimes springing on us randomly, but everybody knows I'm not really a fan of the camera. So when I see her, I just like, okay, let me get mentally prepared <laughs> for what might what whatever she might say or she, whatever she might be doing. But it's been cool. Like she, you can tell she's all into it. But it's been it's been really cool. That's great, Wilson. I had another quick one, Tiana. Uh, Atkins mentioned the other day, just with some of the roles changing, she was asked about, you know, kind of taking on more of a, a vocal leadership role. And for someone like yourself, obviously you guys are different places in your career, but have you seen yourself having to step up a little bit more? Uh, most definitely. I'm talking a lot more. Um, <laughs> I haven't really been much of a talker, but when I do talk, um, you know, the team, they know me, listen to me. So I feel like, you know, I catch myself even now, like today with the scrimmage, I had uh, quite a few things to say and it was accepted. So I think just seeing the respect in the locker room has been, has given me confidence to speak up more, even though I've been here, you know, for a while, but my voice has been, <laughs> it's been around. <laughs> Any last questions for Tiana? Lindsay? Uh, this weekend and um, longer. Oh, my still muted. It no, like the first part was cut off. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I just wanted to ask, what does it mean to you to have Brianna Taylor's name on the back of your jersey this weekend, and what do you hope people get from that? Um, the biggest thing is we want to continue to say our name. Um, we will not stop until justice is is a uh, serve so I think it's um a biggest thing it, it doesn't limit to Breonna Taylor um that was the option that we were given but she is the she is the face of the season right now and she is what's important the season is important but what's more important is finding that justice for her in her memory thank you Tiana thank you If 
anyone has any questions for Elena, please raise your hand. Lindsay? Yeah, hi, Elena. Um, I guess just starting out, how has the transition to the new team been? And from social media, it looks like everyone's getting along uh, pretty well, especially on TikTok. But uh, how, how has the transition to the Mystics been? And, and how are you feeling on and off the court? Um, you know, on and off the court, I'm feeling really good. Um, I feel my confidence, you know, starting to come back to me. This is a great group of girls. They communicate very well. You know, um, if I'm struggling in areas or if I'm doing well in areas, they let me know, you know, it's not just give me the good or just give me the bad. They give me all of it, which is what I really wanted, what I really needed. But yeah, our off the court chemistry, as y'all can tell from the TikToks and all the videos <laughs> and stuff, <laughs> this is a great group of girls. I love them so much. I didn't, I didn't expect everybody to be this goofy, but... <laughs> I'm, I'm just glad I get to be a part of it. Christy? Elena, what have been your um, takeaways from the scrimmage today um, on offense, the rhythm on that side, but also the continuity on the defensive end as well? Um, uh, you know, just a couple takeaways. I do feel like, you know, this is a – new team for the most part um we're still learning each other but you know once we got past like the the mental blocks and everything we were able to you know start figuring stuff out you know get more aggressive you know our stuff was running a lot more smoothly um i know from my end you know i asked a couple of my teammates you know what can i do um and you know they told me and you know, whenever we do hit the next scrimmage and even going into the next practice, you know, I can work on those things. But definitely as a whole, we said that, you know, we definitely need to bring more intensity and everything. And just, you know, the feeling that we had after the scrimmage, it wasn't, we didn't have the best feeling afterwards, but we all, you know, we're feeling that same way. And we just had a group consensus that, you know, we're going to continue to work harder than we have. So, um, the scrimmage was was telling in some areas and you know of course there's plenty to work on but for the most part you know we were able to rally together and get it all together thank you Jen hey Elena um, a couple of your teammates have told us today um, about how good your hands are and that you're you're catching everything uh, is that something that's always come natural naturally to you or is that something that you've worked on over the years um, it's definitely something that I've worked on over the years. I kind of feel like maybe a couple of sports I played at a kid, as a kid, you know, may have contributed to that. But um, I know that's definitely something that, you know, back when we had the little hoop in the driveway, you know, me, my dad, and my brother, we would definitely work on those things because for them, they always wanted me to do things that like, made me stand apart and you know not all not all bigs have good hands you know not all bigs will dive on the floor for a loose ball not all bigs will run the floor and those were things that from a younger age my my father my brother even though my mom was a cheerleader you know she was there to support like that was those were things that um they definitely like pushed for me to do and of course i enjoyed doing them so dan danielle Hey, how are you doing? So I'm from New York, so I wanted to take a, a New York perspective here. I'm sure you, maybe you heard that the Mets have had cutouts of their fans at City Field. The Yankees were pumping in crowd noise to their practices. The Rangers were asking season ticket holders to record themselves making cheers. Have you heard of any of those sort of accommodations that are going to be happening in the Wubble? Not that I, I haven't heard of any, but I'm pretty sure that with how diligently they're working on other aspects, aspects of everything here, they're definitely trying to find a way to get our fans to be engaged in everything, which I really appreciate because I actually played a game with no fans my last game in Turkey, and it it's just not the same. So, you know, whatever suggestions, whatever ideas that the league does come up with, I'm here for all of them because, you know, it's, it's, it's not the same without the fans and, you know, it sucks for, it sucks for them just as much as it sucks for us that we can't play there. So um, I'm pretty sure that the 
the league is organizing some type of, you know, situation where we can be in talk of doing some of those things. Well, having had that experience in Turkey, what's something that you maybe, if you, if they came to you and asked for a suggestion, what would you suggest? What would you um, like to see? Honestly, if you could get, like, if we could get crowd noise in there, that definitely would be, like, another situation. But the person who's pressing the button, they got to be able, like, when the momentum's going, you got to press it on time. You can't be late with it. But I feel like crowd noise definitely would be something that would be really good. But um, I don't know. I heard a rumor about potentially, like, setting up Zoom calls so uh, fans can, like, join into the thing and, you know, cheering and stuff. I don't know how that's going to go, but, you know, they can do that. That'd be cool, too. Cool. Thank you. No problem. Lindsay? Yeah, you talked about getting your confidence back, and I think your your teammates who have been talking about you talked about being excited for you to get this opportunity. Um, the first few years of your WNBA career um, have probably not gone exactly how you envisioned. So how have you worked on your confidence and, and how have you worked on developing and how do you stay mentally strong through, you know, some bumps and bruises? Um, you know, at the end of the day, in terms of like my mental and everything, you know, I, I play for my dad, you know, he's been a driving force to my motivation. And, you know, I know if he was here, he wouldn't have been too happy about the first two seasons either. And it's just like, for me, you know, that's not what I wanted, you know, being bounced around, you know, I can mess with your mental, you know, my confidence was shot. But if I'm being honest with you, like coming into even before I was brought onto this team, my mentality was, we're not doing this again. We're not going to see a third year doing this again. So it was, we're going to work on your touch around the basket. We're going to work on, you know, getting the short corner shot. We're going to work on the elbow. We're going to work on the defense, like things that, you know, I, I listen when I hear, you know, coaches say, oh, she might be a liability here or a liability there. I don't take that and I just, I don't put my tail between my legs and then just scurry off. Like I accept the challenge. I want to change what people say about me. So that's definitely been the driving thing for this upcoming year. Like I, I want to change the tone in terms of what people say about Atlanta Coates. Thank you. Wilson? Hey, Lena, how you doing? Kind of to piggyback off that last question, uh, how do you view this opportunity to change the tone with this group that you're with? Um, I know you guys are still getting comfortable with the spacing and whatnot, but as the only traditional five on the roster, for the most part, I would, I would, uh, I would uh, guess that you kind of like what this could turn into for you on both ends. Definitely. Uh, the possibilities, I feel like, are endless. You know, I'm an unselfish post. Um, you know, if I'm down in there, you know, they give me space. And, you know, once we, once we finally start getting, like, really into the flow of things, I really feel like it's going to be a dangerous thing. You know, being on this team and, you know, just having the teammates that I have and the staff that I've had, like, I've been feeling my confidence been getting back. Like, and even if I want to get down on myself, they won't let me. And that's something that I definitely needed. Um, and I definitely just feel like, you know, me being a traditional five, you know, I like to bang and, you know, I can, that can help my teammates in other ways. You know, I can draw attention. I can be a diversion. You know, I'm trying to be somebody who everybody's got to worry about. Thank you. Jen. I'm curious how, how it's been working with Asia Jones and what you've learned from her so far. Whew, okay, the biggest thing I've learned from Asia so far is to bend down low and come up off my toes. I don't know why I just relied on my height so much, but definitely like in terms of jumping and being more explosive, getting off the floor, she really had to break it down for me. And the progress has definitely shown like even on shots when I'm super close to the basket, I'm going to jump. I don't like to rely on, okay, my lungs are, I mean, my, my arms are super long. Oh, I don't have to jump that high because I'm taller than somebody. No. A guard can come in and block my shot any given day. So definitely a big takeaway that I've gotten from Asia is definitely to load up and explode from the floor. Any last questions for Elena? 
I think that's it then. Thank you, Elena. Thank you. Y'all have a good day. You too.